All right, welcome back to Bayou Rat Real Service, Bayou Reels YouTube channel. Um, today we're going to be looking at a classic reel, a Bantam Shimano Corrado CU200. Some people call these the green machines. These are some workhorse reels. Um, there's a lot of these reels still floating around. Um, these were really excellent reels when they came out. Um, they came out, I guess, in the late 90s and stopped producing them in the mid-2000s. Um, before I get started, I just want to ask everybody to uh, please subscribe if you're enjoying my content. And uh, like my videos, comment um, what more you would like to see or if you have any tips. Not only, in, not only for the real work, disassemblies and reassemblies, but for video and filming as well if you see something that I could be doing better um, and I would appreciate it now before we get started as always I have my uh, schematic for the reel um, now this reel is for a customer It he told me that he hasn't had it cleaned since it was given to him, which was several years ago. I don't know if you can hear. It doesn't really sound great. I can see in the worm gear there's no... There's no grease left inside this worm gear. I'm trying to get to where the light catches it. So there's no grease in it. Um sounds like it's pretty dry maybe some bearings might be out I don't know I don't anticipate it to be in great great shape but um, these reels are hard to hard to kill if uh, if you need to replace bearings that's usually all you really have to do unless you really damage it so we're gonna go ahead and get started with disassembling this uh, Corrado so as always I start with taking the nut cap off so that I can start to remove the nut and the handle. Um, the nut is a 10 millimeter wrench. Now this uh, this drag star does have a spring underneath it so usually what I do is uh, I'll hold the drag star down while I'm taking the nut off so if you can see, I'm pulling back down, taking the nut off, setting that down. I'm going to take the handle off, set that down, and then I'm going to pull the drag star off, and there is the spring. Oop. So one of the things that I forgot to mention is that um, this customer told me he does use this reel to fish for redfish for uh, in salt water so I'm sure there's gonna be some evidence of that salt water corrosion which usually turns the brass parts like a greenish bluish color take that off take this washer off take the two bent drag washers off already kind of getting this some, some evidence of how dirty this reel is you can see that could be from using braid and then the braid getting mixed up with any kind of grime so now that I have the handle and the drag system off um, the next thing I'm going to do is open up the palm side of the reel and take the spool out on these older Shimano's. You can flip this uh, open and turn it counterclockwise and the palm side plate comes off. I usually just snap it closed so I can lay it down flat and I'll pull the spool out. Which 
it already feels like it might be seized. I'm going to take this uh, spool tension cap off. There is a spring under here. Take that spring out. Set that aside. Um, so this spool is uh, feels like it might be seized up inside of this bearing. Yeah. So it's definitely been a while since it's been cleaned. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a little, uh, my punch here, which is actually flat on the end. So it shouldn't affect anything, but I'm still going to use the larger side just a little bit, just to tap on the end of the spool that's sticking out. But I'm not going to tap on it real hard. It's probably going to be loud. Mm -mm, didn't come out. Nope. It isn't going to it isn't come out right now. So I'm going to set that aside for just a second. I'm going to take this bearing out that's in the palm side plate. If you can see the uh, retention clip inside of there, like I normally do, I use my small flathead screwdriver and I, I scoop out the uh, retainer clip. I put my finger on one end and I start to scoop it out from the other end because this wheel goes flying out. There we go. So I'm going to set that aside. And then I'm going to try to pull this bearing out. Like I mentioned in the beginning, this customer told me that he hasn't had this real clean since he's had it, and he's had it for several years. So I am going to be expecting things to be tight and dirty and difficult on this reel. The reason why I'm filming this one, and not one that I know is going to be easy, because I want to illustrate how difficult it can be sometimes to uh, clean reels. And disassemble and reassemble reels. Um, what I may do here is I may take this ring off of the plate, which I don't normally do, to see if I can push this bearing out from the backside. So I'm going to take these two screws out to try to remove this uh, plate. And then from the backside, I'm going to use my uh, little pick to push in the center, which should help try to push the bearing out, but that doesn't seem to be working either. Let's see. There we go. You probably just heard it kind of pop out some. There we go. So while I have it here, oops, I'm going to go ahead and put this back on. Now, you know what? This is going to need to be clean too. It's pretty dirty. Um, if you can see how much dirt is kind of built up in there and grime. So I'm going to leave this apart. I'm not going to put the screws back in, but I am going to set it down off to the other side. There is a there is a spring in here, 
And so I'm just gonna lift up, put my finger over the spring and lift up on this plastic arm. From the underneath, take that out. Because this is definitely going to need to be cleaned. Just kind of stack all that back together to make room here. And then I have the bearing out, and I can set that bearing off to the side. Now back to this, back to the main body of the reel. I was able to push this uh, spool out by tapping on the pin a little bit more. So I'm going to take this spool off, and I can see part of why it was stuck. If you can see how dirty and kind of grimy this tip is. So spool shafts have a real tight clearance. I'm just gonna give that a wipe while I have it in my hand. Spool shafts have a really tight clearance throughout the rest of the reel and to, uh, tight tolerance. And so it doesn't take much for it to get hung up. Uh, what I'm gonna do next, you can see a on the bearing is a little bit rust so I'm going to use my Bazone pin pusher to get this bearing off I really like these Bazone tools um, versus the Boca bearing pliers in most cases because I just find that it's I don't know, less stress put on it. And I just feel like when I'm squeezing those pliers tight and then it pops, it just feels uh, just so violent. But I do like Boca's bearings. And I am a Boca dealer. So can pull a spool shaft bearing off, set that down. I'm going to zoom out and show you what I'll usually do with the pin. I usually take the pin and I'll put it underneath my paper towel here so that I don't lose it. Because it's very small and um, parts for these corrals are starting to get difficult to find. Um, Usually any parts that you need to find are coming off of already existing parts reels. So I'm just looking at this reel and I notice that all the brake tabs are pushed out, which will give you the most resistance, which may be part of the reason why I was making such noise, so much noise whenever I was spinning the reel. But we're gonna set that aside and uh, start taking the rest of the reel apart on the reel handle side. So next on the Corrado is you have four screws to take off, one, two, three, four. Um, I always start from the front top and work my way clockwise towards the bottom whenever I do the outside screws. Um, there are no screws on the inside like other reels or on the underneath of the body here, usually here. This one only has the four screws on the outside plate. So I'll start from the front on the top and I'll lay them out in order and try to take note of which one's the different lengths. I believe on this one, the bottom one, which will be the last one that I take out, is usually the longest one and the other three will be the same length. One, 
two. Three. And then this last one here at the bottom, the fourth one. This is usually a longer one. Which, if my memory serves me correctly, I will be right. Now, I continue to hold the plate against the frame of the reel. Yep. So you can see this last screw here that I took out of the bottom is longer than the other three. So I'm going to let the springs kind of push it up a little bit or let it come loose and then pull it up slowly. Uh, what I'll do before I do anything next is I'll take the two springs off of the post for the uh, yoke because those are probably the loosest component here. It's not necessarily because they're springs, but they're just so lightweight that um, it's easy for them to fall and go flying or if you hit something or bump something or pop it, they'll just take off. So I usually take these two springs off and I set those aside. Now next what I do is I take the plate and if the drive shaft roller clutch sleeve didn't stay on the drive shaft, I'm going to push it out and take it out. So there's your sleeve. Um, the one-way bearing should come out. Let me, uh, I'll pull this bearing out before I lose it. Because, uh, I've already taken the spring out when I took the spool tension cap off. Now this is stuck. I can see from the back side. I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera. Let me zoom in a little bit. See? You can see there's some rust here. We'll probably have to replace this bearing because I don't think that rust is going to come off. And uh, you can kind of see on the inside here how dirty it is. And it's just really dry. This real inside is just really dry. Um... It's not as dirty as I expected it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my flathead screwdriver and I'm just going to kind of push onto this on this bearing and try to get it out. Just going around, around it. And I can feel it kind of giving just millimeter by millimeter. Not pushing too hard because I don't want anything to break. But just kind of giving it little pushes. There we go. So the bearing came out. You can see some rust. Um, this surface rust right here usually doesn't bother me too much and it cleans up alright. But when that rust is on the face of the two of one of the sides... Usually that means some of that rust and that corrosion is in, has gotten inside of the bearing. So it's usually difficult to clean. And it doesn't spin real good, you can see. So that'll probably get replaced. So next I'm going to want to take the uh, one-way clutch bearing out of the uh, palm, uh, hand aside plate. Um, this one comes out. You have to push from the inside. Or the back side, depending on how, whatever you want to call it. But it has to go out. So I just kind of use my punch, which kind of fits everything real well. And I'll push it out. Um, you have to be careful doing that with, with an item. Because what you don't want to really do is damage the plastic set plate. Or any of the pins inside. And this, this bearing fits loose. This uh, punch fits loose inside of there. And what I really just want is this surface area here to fit on it just a little bit so I can push on it. So that came out and now the handle side plate is off and empty 
and ready to be cleaned. So next I'm going to start to take apart the drive shaft uh, or the drive gear and the drag gears, drag washers. So what I, I kind of do is I, I'll um, hold the reel in my palm where I can use my index finger and my thumb to turn the drive gear or hold the drive gear and I'll turn the handle back and forth while I'm also pushing up with my fingers to get the drive gear off. And you can see that that stuff comes off. Then next I'm going to take my take a pick or a screwdriver and take the top drive washer off, metal washer off. Then I'm going to take the same pick and try to get underneath this uh, felt washer, get the felt washer off. Now this time the uh, dog gear and the drag washer in between the drive gear and the dog gear is still on there. But sometimes they stay stuck to the bottom of the drive gear, which is fine. Set those aside. Next, I'm going to take my screwdriver and lift up on the yoke. So I can take the yoke and pinion gear out, separate those. Now I can see this is kind of some old, this had a, had a couple different types of grease in it. Um, but it doesn't look too dirty. Pinion gear looks like it's still in good shape. I don't see any broken teeth on it. So now that that's out, Now that we have the pinion gear and yoke out, nothing left on here is going to fall out. So what I like to do is I like to go back to the palm side and take this screw out so I can remove the face plate. Now this screw is different from all the other screws that we took out for the for the side plate or the handle plate because it's silver where all the other ones are black so it's easy to know which one it is so that's usually where I put it at knowing that it's for the face plate and then the face plate comes off which exposes the uh, line guide on the worm gear system from here I'm gonna start to take the worm gear and line guide off. Uh, but to start that I use a little bit larger flat head that fits well into this plastic cap and just break it loose. And then I'll finish it removing it with my fingers and set everything aside together. Inside of this cap is the uh, pole which is kind of stuck in there because it's a little dirty in there too, of course. So one method to kind of get it to fall out is I'll just kind of shake the shake the line guide or, or start to turn the handle and see if I can get it to kind of slip out some, which it doesn't seem to want to do. go so there's the Paul okay now that the Paul's out we can remove this e-clip here using a small flathead screwdriver and put my finger over it so it doesn't shoot out when it breaks loose and lose it. 
So there's that small E clip. I'm going to push this brass washer to line it up so that I can push the worm gear through the shaft sleeve pretty well. And I'm going to take that washer out put it on the side. I'm going to pull the drive shaft out and you can see the sleeve starts to come out with it. And then the line guide comes off. Now usually this is where you'll see a lot of dirt because this is a system that's exposed to the elements to the outside so you'll see a lot of dirt and build up here which this isn't terrible set all that aside together the worm gear this is called the idle gear which interacts with the this gear underneath on the drive shaft of where the drive gear goes so if you push this in turn it it slips right off Now that we have the worm gear out of the way, um, we're going to take this drive shaft off, which on these reels is a little tricky because you have to go through the body of the reel. And I'm going to see if I can position this at an angle where you can see it with the light and not create any shadows. But there's two screws here, one and two. And underneath this plate that these screws hold is the C-clip that's holding the drive shaft on, if you can see that. So this C-clip is holding the drive shaft on. Now if you notice, these two screws, one, two, line up with these two holes here. And I have a screwdriver that fits well through these holes and into the head of that screw. Let me back out so you can see the whole thing a little bit. And so it lands right in that screwdriver, which is how this real body is designed for those two holes. And so I'm going to undo those two screws. Sorry about the lighting and the shadows. I'm going to take one of my flathead screwdrivers, wedge it under there and just kind of take it out. Now this again is something where you, see, you start to see a lot of dirt or grime or stuff built up on this piece. Um, so now that, that plate's off, we can access this C-clip under here, which I always use my flathead screwdriver to remove. So the C-clip's off, the drive shaft fell out. But what's, what was underneath the C-clip is also important because you have some washers. And so what you need to note is that there was what's kind of almost a, a tough rubber washer but it is a little brittle, so I wouldn't bend it too much. And then a brass washer. Those were what was underneath the C-clip. Now, let me... Now, the drive shaft did fall out. But I'm going to show you what it looks like when it comes off. So we got those, the C-clip and the washers off. If you lift up, not a, now not always, but sometimes this bearing that's at the end of this drive shaft stays stuck in this hole. And uh, it can be quite a pain to uh, 
to get it out. But there's a very small brass washer that is on top of this bearing, which goes in between the bearing and the body of the reel. And I mean, it's tiny. You almost can't even see it without me putting my hand underneath it. So that washes out. This bearing is off. And then this gear will come off of the drive shaft. Pay attention to the fact that the recessed portion of this gear faces down. And it fits over that slot here. Over this raised face where the that bearing that we just took out goes. So we can set that aside. Next, next what I'm going to do is take the yoke post plate off by removing these two screws here. One, two. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my finger over where the spring is, where the spring connects to the kickout arm, which is in the cam. I like to hold it down with my finger here so that nothing snaps or pops. And I'm going to take these two screws off. trying to not block the shot with my hand while I unscrew it. So one, two screws. Now this fence, this uh, post plate will come off. You can set that aside. Now while I have my finger on this right here, my index finger, I'm gonna take my middle finger of the same hand and put it over the cam where I'm holding the cam down and I'm going to take my small flathead screwdriver and I'm going to lift up on this spring to relieve the tension and then now I can pull everything up so this kick out plate comes off of the cam the spring comes out and you'll notice that this spring has um, two ends. One end has a long shaft and the other end has a little bit of a shorter shaft. The long shaft on this reel fits inside of the body of the reel where the short end is what fits inside of the kick out arm. Now the only thing we have left is to remove the thumb bar and this arm that activates, I mean, uh, interacts with the with the cam, which is what this tab on this arm is for. So the first thing I do is I take this this screw out here, which just keeps it close to the body of the reel. And then going through the reel, you can see this screw here. I'm going to take that screw off. And take it out. Set the screw aside. Now, I'm going to pull the plate out, this uh, arm out, and then the thumb bar you should be able to manipulate it off. And then there's nothing left to the reel. So everything's been everything's been taken apart. So what I want to do here is sort of take a moment to show you how I have everything laid out as I take it apart. Um, what I have here is the handle and inside of this little square that I created with the handle is the star drag, the spring that went underneath the star drag, the nut, the nut cap. I have the these curved drag washers. This is all the stuff that goes on the outside of the handle. 
side plate, everything that kind of goes outside here. Um, I have my handle side screw plate, plate screws here, and the other screw, the silver screw for the other side of the face plate, the palm side of the face plate, my bearings. And then here's all my drive shaft components here. You can see the drive shaft, the gears, the drag washers, the drag wash, metal drag washer, um, the cap, and the C-clip that holds the drive shaft on the body. This is all my worm gear and line guide components. Uh, and then here I have all of the brake and cam systems, including the thumb bar, the yoke, the pinion gear. And that's it. That's how this reel uh, comes apart. Uh, I'm going to clean everything and wash it up real good. And when we come back, we're going to reassemble it with some fresh oil and fresh grease. Now, please remember to subscribe, comment, and like the video. Again, comments can be about reels in general or about my filming qualities. Let me know if uh, you have any suggestions or notice anything that I could be doing better um, I'm definitely open to all of that for sure so thanks for watching and coming up next will be the reassembly video